Well, the Word of God is so special to us today. Uh, we started with the prophet Isaiah, and he talks about the suffering servant, whom we have come to know to be Jesus, and of course symbolized powerfully on the cross that we have here, and him giving his life for us personally. And then in the letter to the Hebrews, we hear again about Jesus, but we hear about Jesus who has risen to heaven. We hear about Jesus who is in his glory, and we hear about then who we are called to be in that movement. And it's really us approaching the throne of heaven, the throne of grace, which is what the letter to the Hebrews tells us. And as we approach the, the, the throne of grace, we ask for mercy. We ask for the mercy of God. And letting God's mercy flow over us. That's really a Eucharist moment here in the church, the cathedral. We're asking for God's mercy to just flow us from the throne of God's love. It's really wonderful. And that sets up the Gospel of St. Mark for us. And of course, it's a story we've heard many times, and lest we get ourselves caught in the story again, you know, the sons of Zebedee were doing what we do often. Lord, what's in it for me? What's in it for me? Uh, I remember the, the uh, I'm trying to think of the baseball movie, uh, and Field of Dreams, and he kept asking in the movie, what's in it for me? And of course, the person who represented, I guess, God or whoever, said, if you build it, he will come. And he finally looked to the person that was the catcher who took off the catcher's uh, face mask, and it was his father, whom he had not seen nor heard from. And that was a loving moment in which they got to play pitch together. Simple moment, but a moment of mercy and a moment of love. Well, we are called into that kind of special relationship with Jesus, too. In the end of that gospel, Mark today, chapter 10, verse 45, always gets my attention. And, and, and Jesus says to the people of that day, he says to us, the Son of Man has come not to be served, but to serve. And we need to take that seriously. He's come to serve us. And he's come to serve us so that he may offer his life for the ransom of many. In other words, that he may offer his life for our ransom. For us to be saved. For us to live with God forever. For us to be able to sit at the throne of God and have God's mercy and love and joy flowing over us forever. Imagine that, because that's really what's being offered. Now to bring it home, there's a, a, a couple some years ago that shared a true story with me. Their son Bobby, who was probably about uh, somewhere between 8 and 10, roughly, was consistently late walking home from school. And it got to the point where the parents were getting super concerned, what's he getting into? What's going on? And so the parent questions, you know, the hairs on the back of your neck starts to come out. You know, parents, you know what that feels like, right? So they finally sat him down, mom and dad, and said, Bobby, you understand you're, you're, you're late coming from school every day, and you're late for dinner, even, and we're concerned. And Bobby, of course, as a good 8, 9, 10-year-old boy would say, uh-huh, 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 I understand, I understand. So the dad said, okay, Bobby, the next time you come home late, especially for dinner, you're going to have bread and water at your place instead of a full dinner. So he asked, Bobby, do you understand? Bobby said, uh-huh, 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 I do. So a couple days go by, Bobby did pretty good for a couple days, but then this one day he came in late again. And it was time for supper. And he went and sat at his place, and there was bread on his plate. 
in a glass of water. He looked at it. He looked at his parents. He looked at it again. He looked at his dad. And he realized he was really hungry at that moment. Okay? He realized it. The dad waited the moment to have it really sink in. Then he reached over and took the bread, or the plate, Bobby's plate, moved it in front of him and put his plate in front of Bobby. Bobby, years later, said he never forgot that moment because that was the moment that his father revealed to him God's love for him. That God would give for us, just as his dad did, for him in that moment. By the way, for our little ones that are out there, he was never late for dinner again. Never late for dinner again. But it's really a moment for us also to recognize Jesus, the suffering servant in the first reading, Jesus glorified in the second reading, he was. And then the Jesus who says to us, the Son of Man has come not to serve, but not to be served, but to serve. And to give his life for the ransom of many. He's here to serve us, and he's calling us into that same kind of relationship with each other, to serve one another. That's part of what this sin is about, by the way. It's about us in service of each other. And part of that is for us to be able to speak to one another, Share with one another. And one of the opportunities you have to do that uh, is online. We have some uh, questions for you that we will then send in to the Holy Father. And they're about, they're very simple, but one is on evangelization in our families, our schools, and our parishes. And are we really bringing Jesus to those we really need to bring to? The second question is about discipleship. Are we making disciples? And are we making disciple makers in our parishes, our schools, and our families? And then the third question is on simply our youth and our young adults. And how are we doing bringing them to Christ? And how are we doing making them disciples? And then there's some guide kind of insights all the way through each of those questions for you. The intention is, individually, you can participate. As a family, I encourage you, encourage you to participate and, and share those questions with each other. And then, if you are in any kind of parish group or parish organization, we intend to have that happen in each of those moments. Some of the priests are going to be real brave, and they're going to do complete listening sessions. I don't know if, if uh, Father Dennis is going to be that great yet, but we'll see. Uh, and then all that's going to be compiled together as a diocese. Then it's all going to be compiled together as the United States. And then it's going to be all compiled together in the world and go to the Synod in Rome for two years from now. I have not been invited to it yet, so we'll see. Uh, and so that's us coming together in communion, so in unity. Participating together in the love of Jesus Christ in service and, our, and living our mission, which is to make disciples, baptize all nations, teach them to do all that He's commanded us, and know that He's with us to the end of the age because the suffering servant has given His life for our ransom, that we may live with Him forever. Amen again. Amen. I can sit down there.